Hello world, Kara St. Louis here. So I'm recording something right now. It is 4th January, 2018. I am back in Maine with my children. After two long months of touring, there's a cat prowling around my legs. You know, this is the inaugural um, outing of my new camcorder given to me by my children um, for Christmas, which is great, <laughs> absolutely great. Um, <clears throat> and I'm side lit and there's a blizzard right outside my window right now and that's okay. Um, and I don't know really what to call this because it's not a retrospective, but I do feel like I need to say something on the cusp of, you know, where we've been and where we're headed. Um, <clears throat> so 2017, um, really should have some description that goes under it, lacking a, you know, lacking a musical score, a soundtrack or something that would be better, but let's talk about it first. And let's talk about the first half of 2017 and then let's put that away, okay? Because it is what it is. Um, January through June of 2017, I found out what it was like to be stalked by my employer. Now bear in mind that I am a Waldorf teacher in the United Kingdom, they call it a Steiner teacher. And supposedly I've signed some sort of paperwork that forbids me of, to talk about any of this stuff. But you know what? I'm going to talk about it because I would love to see these people in court. I would love for them to take me to court because they broke, they didn't uphold a single solitary labor law in my case. And I would just like to point that out to a legal system somehow. So bring it, bring it, dude, because I'm going to talk about this. I am a Waldorf teacher through and through aside from being a mom and an activist, and I know, you know, I'm watching, um, I'd like to say I'm watching the evolution of my pedagogy, my school, my curriculum, the gesture, but I'm not. In the UK, I'm watching it die, <clears throat> and we need to talk about that, but I'll get there. So let's talk about this um, thing that happened to me at the beginning of 2017. My employer basically stalked me, and in the end, um, I lost my teaching position essentially, um, and that's okay. That's all right because anything like that pushes you onto something bigger and better, or it should. It can if you let it. Um, it's just sad that that's where the, the state of the schools in the United Kingdom now. So, anyway, first half of 2017, second half of 2017, I learned how to apply what I know, what I've learned from about seven years of speaking up speaking out and trying to understand why things are going on like they're going on. And it has taken me to amazing places. It has taken me to places that terrify me because I think we have to be terrified to get to the next level, whatever that is. I mean, there is a series, a pattern of initiation in our lives, which I'm also talking about quite freely and publicly now because of the times that we live in. I don't think that we have the luxury of playing on um, let's keep it a secret anymore for the most part, okay? Um, we can't because all of those games are known to the predator, the adversary, they're being used against us. So what good does it do us to keep all of that secret for the slim portion of people who are kind of finding their way to the next level um, when it's being used against us, okay? It's being used to manipulate us and make us dance. So that's got to stop. That's one of the things about 2018. This is um, a pivotal year. It's a pivotal year. It's the turn of the tide. So let's go together. Let's do it together, okay? Um, the other thing I learned, the other thing I became aware of in the second half of 2017 is how much I dampened <clears throat> what I was bringing. I mean... I used to be extraordinarily outspoken and I really didn't give a damn what anybody thought about what I had to say. And I'm certainly back to that now, but what I didn't realize was that I had Stockholm syndrome in a way I was trying to, um, you know, tone everything down because I knew I was being watched. And that's really, it's as easy as that, right? It's as easy as that. That's how quickly it happens. Now I'm not, teaching anymore and I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say because I want to say what I want to say. I want to say what I came here to say. I have a mission. I have a task. I have to complete it. 
go with me, don't go with me. Seriously, that's just completely your choice. But I'm going, I'm going through the forest with a machete like I'm supposed to. They handed me the machete the day I arrived on this planet, and this is where I'm headed. Okay, so let's not pull any punches anymore. All right. Um, however, I do want to say this to you. Okay, if you want those of us who are not independently wealthy or backed by the Blue Chicken Society to be able to do this kind of thing, then you're just going to have to kick in a little energy, a little bit of energy. And that's where I'm finding Patreon comes in. Although I do run, periodically I will run small fundraisers, usually when something's on fire in my life. And I will ask for a certain amount of money. And um, generally speaking, we've always been able to come up with most of it, if not all of it. So the only time that was an issue was right around Christmas when everybody, everybody was so broke. Anyway, if you want people like me to be able to say what we think, I am not supported by anyone. It's just me, guys. It's just me. So go to my Patreon. Okay, go to my Patreon channel, www.patreon.com forward slash Kara St. Louis, no dot. Listen, I try really hard to make that worth your time. You have made me a better writer, a better activist, a better speaker, a better thinker. All of those people who are my hardcore supporters at Patreon. It's worth five bucks a month, gang. It just is, Okay. It just is because you're benefiting from most of us, if not all of us who are over there, you're benefiting from a lifetime of experience, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I mean, a lot of us who are there have had some very, very deep experiences and we are resolving those and we are integrating those and we are um, concluding, bringing conclusions to you based on what our experience and our knowledge is. I mean, <clears throat> this is really invaluable. So, so do what you can to support it. Okay. Um, so anyway, June 2, 7, 2017, my first, uh, my first, <laughs> one of my kids is going to end up on TV. My first lecture was at New Horizons and that's Robin Christie and I love him to pieces. It's a wonderful venue. It's a wonderful venue. Um, but like everything else, it's one of those things where you go up there, they give you the ticket money, you sell some books, you go home. But let me tell you something. One of the thing about new, things about New Horizons is the reason they do it that way is because we're encouraging people to come out and look each other in the eye. There's a cat back there. Um, you know, be in each other's presence, be in each other's space. Don't just sit at home and watch things on the computer. And so the easier we can make that, the better off we are. And I support that absolutely. Whenever I can, I support that. So um, I'll be heading back up there again in May. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, so that was June. And then um, in July, I believe I was working on my Patreon. I was trying to get that up and running and understand what it is, what was wanted how that relationship could work. It has been an extraordinarily rewarding relation, uh, endeavor for me, for me personally, for me, it's perfect. It's perfect because it's part of the tripod, you know, I always laugh when people, you know, get sort of this opera thing going and storm off Facebook because they've just had it because, you know, it's where everybody is right now. You, you have to take it for what it is. You have to take it for what it is and what it, for me, and for every other activist I know of, the threefold thing is YouTube, which which really did me in this year. YouTube made my channel pay a paid channel, even though I never asked them to do that and booted over a thousand subscribers. And I've been begging them to fix that ever since, and they haven't bothered. They're not going to. So it's there. They it's there, and it's called Hard True. All of the videos are still there, 120 some videos, they're all still there. I had it at ad free, but I've had to reactivate the ads again because we're not doing, we're not quite pulling enough on Patreon to make that switch. So, you know, it's not never gonna make any of us rich, but um, anyway, so you could go there and you can see all of my videos. It's a place to park them. I use Vimeo a little bit, but that's mostly um, for private stuff having to do with patrons only. Um, 
in August, I was in Germany and we had uh, an event, did we not? In my view, we had uh, one of the events of a lifetime. If you really understand the eclipse mid-August, you understand that that was a real gauntlet thrown down. It, um, it changed everything. It changed everything. It became time to decide between artificial intelligence and uh, authentic intelligence. I mean, I talk about that all the time. There are two kinds, and we're authentic intelligence. Um, human beings, the human imagination is the translator between the morphogenic field which is pure potential, and the material plane in an enlivened, organic way. Okay, and that split right down the middle of the United States was an e-splice. Okay, that was a splice that made it even harder to tell the difference between organic and artificial intelligence. Now is the time, that's why the Fae are here, the Fae are a liminal, entity they are the liminal being they appear in the space between one thing and the next and they are here big time and i have a mission that's been given to me from them and i don't care who thinks what of it i mean i can hear cw chanter right now oh oh they told you didn't they you know i don't care it's what's going on come or don't really really um Okay, so this really, and the other thing that, that because of that, this is how, how serious the eclipse is, the time for nuances and delicacies in deciding things is long gone, okay? Uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, um, whether or not to do something um, becomes a lot clearer because we don't have eons and eons to um, decide whether or not something's a good idea or not a good idea, you know? Or who needs to know? Who doesn't need to know? Everybody needs to know. We need to be completely transparent right now. That's what's up. And then you you get to do you join or you don't join. Yeah? You go one way or the other, one side of the eclipse or the other. Okay. Um the other thing that happened to me toward late summer, mid to late summer, was I um became working partners with someone whom I absolutely adore. His name is Shane. Shane the Ruiner, they know him as, and I used to wonder if he really wanted that appellation, but now I think he should carry that that nickname with pride because he's called that because they never could make him do what they wanted him to do for the most part. So Shane and I have a cosmic date, a date with destiny, and we have something that we need to do, and we have come both come down on the side of organic Humanity, if you will, uh, certainly the earth, um, the woman that is earth. And I bet you can hear that. I bet you can hear that um, blizzard that's on the way. Anyway, uh, so Shane and I are partners now, and we are going to be doing a lot of work this coming year on our lecture tour, which is titled I, Comma, Magician. And it is not a magic show, guys. It is not a magic show. And Shane has a lot of magic, and I'm going to be representing. So, um, anyway, I love you, Shane, and I'm really, really glad that uh, we both kept our appointment, and off we go. So, um, <clears throat> then I started prepping the tour. My Siamese. Started prepping for the tour. December, January. Okay, it is really super, as I said, it's really, really, really important to get yourself in front of people. For people to come together, there is an energy, there is a magic. Um, you can be so much more than what you might individually be. I'm gonna have to let the cat out, hang on. Okay, cat's gone. To get together, you know, to get in the same place. Breathe the same air, probably break bread together. It makes a huge difference. I had some people in California who had actually done the workshop online and then they did the all day workshop with me there. And it was really sort of fascinating to get their feedback on the differences because the difference are, the differences are pretty huge. Now what I would not do is blow off the workshop because you have to do it online because essentially I can do it with anybody. Um, I've got one coming up on Sunday that's got people from um, Hungary, 
Scotland, uh, a couple from the United States, maybe one, I think one from Northern England, all at the same time. And that's what the computer makes possible. The computer makes, the internet makes all things possible. But to be able to get into the same room with people, okay, that's really important. Please don't stop trying to do that because it becomes more and more difficult all the time. It's so easy to sit here. And everybody's doing business on the internet, me included. All of us are, okay? So anyway, I have to say a special thank you to a powerhouse in New Orleans, Raphael O'Neill is her name. I've never seen anybody who's more pushy than me, and she still isn't. I mean, but it's, it's really somebody who can push forward, who has decided what she wants, and she's just going to go ahead and get it. And that's awesome. That's what it took to pull New Orleans together. Okay. I was, I was really pleased with New Orleans. I was, did two lectures. Now we'll say the first lecture was slim pickings, but I got to meet Sean Getro there and he's an amazing man. And then the second um, lecture, which was the next day was at a, the metaphysical healing center. And it's an old sort of voodoo place. And um, that was pretty amazing. We had a good crowd. That was a good crowd. Uh, and then we did the workshop at the same place the next day. And um, yeah, it was very fulfilling. It was very fulfilling and potent and bode well for the rest of the tour. So I left from New Orleans to Northern California. I'm not going to give a shout out to any individual in Northern California because they were all amazing that Northern California became all about the Santa Rosa fires, okay? I wanted to get out there, I made the lecture free, and then I hoped to fill the workshop with enough people to offset the costs, <clears throat> because it's an amazing venue at IONS, Petaluma, IONS Earthrise. I like to go there, it's a bit expensive, but it's well worth it uh, if you're there for the workshop. We had a, we had a wonderful time, we ate together, and. Uh, and um, it really was about what's up, what's coming. And I had Emily Moyer there, whom I absolutely adore. I have a, a low-level crush. I'm low-level crushing on Emily right now. Emily. <laughs> and um, Jeff Gates was there. And uh, what was really nice about that particular lecture was that because these were people who were used to interviewing and being interviewed and really having these sorts of conversations, anything, they were actually able to add, add to the, the nuances and the depths of that lecture in a way that was, an, was not interruptive or intrusive or any of that stuff. You know, when Emily said something, it really meant something. When he said, some, Jeff said something, it really meant something. Although he did eliminate like three pages of my lecture, but I will forgive him for that because everything should be out on the table. And we got to talk about some stuff that I hadn't even thought of. We were able to figure out some things that I hadn't been able to figure out. And so it enhanced the lecture. I've been in lectures, like I gave a lecture in August in Germany where I literally had to give up. I literally had one woman talking after every sentence I uttered to the point where, and she wouldn't stop, to the point where I have to say, you know what, I'm just gonna stop now. I'm just not gonna keep going you know, and, and no one, it didn't seem to occur to anybody that that was unusual or something weird had happened or anything, but in California, it was, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. The workshop was fantastic. We, I loved, I, I mean, we had 15, 20 people there, which is a good crowd. 20 is a good crowd. I can do up to 30 in person. My friend, Steve Tynan, who's going to hate me that I met, mentioned him. He always lets me stay with him. We always have a really good time. Uh, <clears throat> he drove me up to Napa to check out this area where I had worked with a woman. Uh, uh, well, I had worked with an initiate really. And uh, we, we, we had, uh, that was a wonderful thing that we went up there. Um, I don't think she's there anymore actually, but on the way back, we were being hugely irreverent and boom, our tire, our tire exploded. <laughs> I'm positive. I'm positive. That was anyway. I digress, I digress. Anyway, so thank you, Steve, and I can't wait to see you again. He is the coolest guy ever, okay. Uh, yeah, 
Okay, so that was the tour. Unfortunately, I have to say, yeah, I have to say I was also scheduled for Arizona, two, two um, events in Arizona, one in Scottsdale and one in Sedona. Um, the one in Sedona got canceled first when Matt, uh, God, what's his last name? Matt Landman was asked to leave town. He was going to, he was going to speak with me. Um, and then he just disappeared and I have never been able to get him to answer any queries from me again. So whatever, um, that'll be the only time I ever try to work with him. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, <coughs> and then the event in Scottsdale was interesting too. Arizona is an interesting place. I have to tell you, Arizona and New Mexico are probably prime locations, prime targets for Agenda 21 cities, um, groups of people. A couple of reasons I think that. Someone told me that um, it is being looked at by um, Bill Gates. He's got an e-university e centered out of there and also... Um, I can't remember his name, but the uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk has a lot of dealings in Arizona and New Mexico. Now, having grown up in New Mexico, I can tell you that makes a lot of sense. It makes sense because it would be really easy to cut people off from food and water there, wouldn't it? It's the middle of the desert. You could make people completely dependent on you. I don't have a problem with Albuquerque. I grew up there. That's my dojo, okay? But Arizona is a tough, tough thing. I've never liked going there. This time did not make me feel any better about Arizona. The people who asked me to come there in the end did no promotion for it at all. So two weeks before I was supposed to arrive, I realized that no one knew I was coming. So I had to cancel that one as well. Okay. And then um, came back to Maine and had Christmas with my children, which is wonderful. Was supposed to be headed for Toronto to do the first, um, uh, the um, the first example, the first um, lectures in I'm a Titian with Shane Bales. And then suddenly at the last minute, we lost our venue and Shane had some personal stuff in his life. And that's just the way it goes, man. And I'm supposed to be heading up there today and I'm looking outside. If, if everything had gone as, as it was supposed to have gone, I would have supposed to be on a plane today. But man, there's a blizzard out there. Okay, this is that big old blizzard, so I wasn't going to get there anyway, so that's the way it goes. So Shane and I have rescheduled for the 1st of April, and I'm happy to do that, and it looks like we're going to be doing about three events in Canada, and uh, hoping to hit, I'm not going to say who, what, where, why, or when, but I'm hoping to hit Austin, and we were invited to LA, but that date has not been set yet, we just know April, so in April we're going to be around doing I'm Magician, however... In May, he's had my way he's coming to the UK, okay? We have three events so far scheduled in the UK. One of them is the New Horizons because I want to always make sure I do what I can for Rob and Chrissy up there because they've been so good to me. It's been so difficult to get a foot in the door in the United Kingdom. If you do not have, if you're not one of the good old boys or you do not have blonde hair down to your knees and a nice fresh pair of blouse bunnies, you aren't getting anywhere. I'll tell you that right now. So for the people who have done, um, I made a space for me to come and bring my um, information. I will all, I will do anything for you. Then the next thing is, uh, dimensions, the dimensional show with um, Rachel Murphy in Birmingham. That's May 12th. I am also doing, and Shane's going to be around for all this stuff, gang. <clears throat> I'm also doing a, 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 a lecture. We'll be doing a lecture near Marlboro either on the uh, 19th or the, of May, the 19th of May or the 11th of May. One of those two. I will let you know. It's I always post everything on my Patreon and all that stuff. So, um, And then Maria Wheatley and I are going to, on May the 20th, we are doing a tour after I have a workshop. I'm going to do a workshop of my own all day long. And then she and I are going to gather just a couple people and go to Woodhenge and in Byron's. And then we're going to have dinner together. And then we are doing an exclusive private tour through the inner ring at Stonehenge. She's going to do her sacred water um sacred sites 
workshop in situ. And I, I think that's amazing. I've got that posted on my Facebook as well. If you want to join in, just private message me. I can't think why you wouldn't, why anyone wouldn't want to do that at least once. Um, so that's May of the year. And then, um, yeah, then in June, Maria and I are taking a tour of people to, for the solstice to Ireland. In August, Maria Shane and I are taking a tour of people to the Untersberg, which is the magic mountain in Salzburg. And Shane and I are going to do our eye magician lecture on top of the mountain. In October, I'm doing my own tour to Iceland and the Faroe Islands. And part of that tour will be a six day, no, that's not right, a four day retreat where we do all of the exercises that I teach as an integrative organic meditation. So then I'll be back. I'll be back in the United States to do my usual winter tour. So let's talk about 2018, okay? You know, it's just time to put your money where your mouth is. It really is. There, if you don't do that this year, you are giving consent. This is implied consent, okay? Um, and you ought not to do that. You ought not to do that, okay? Stand up for yourself. Fight for your children. Fight for the earth, okay? There are a few of them and billions of us, for God's sake. Okay, I see Agenda 21 being enacted all over the place. Certainly, that's what Santa Rosa is about. We have the issue of medical marijuana, cannabis, and hemp. I am a huge proponent of that. I think I'm one of the people who thinks that this planet was covered in, in cannabis and should, should be covered in cannabis again. One of the things is the reason we got this into our system is because animals free ranged on that stuff. And, and then we, we received it via milk and things like that, eggs. Okay, so it's been taken away from the earth and it's been taken away from us. Do not trust the government to give this to you. Do not. Do not. There is GMO marijuana out there already. It's already out there. Anybody who shows up sick in a hospital from smoking, it's because they're smoking genetically modified marijuana. It's not because they're doing anything natural. Okay. All right. Now, so having said that, I also want to say two more things. Okay. First of all, I suppose it was August or September, maybe later than that. I realized that Shane and I had a mirror image. We have an artificial intelligence mirror image out there. There's a, pair of, uh, there's a pair out there, someone kind of like me and someone kind of like Shane, who are taking, taking it all sort of on the road, so to speak, quote unquote, on the road, but with a very artificial intelligence flavor. Be aware of that. Once I've said that to you, maybe you'll snap on that. Okay. The other thing is, <clears throat> I'm going to say this is going to make people mad, maybe, I don't know, but um, once in a while... Once in a while, someone will hop on my Patreon for a buck or five bucks or whatever, hang out for a month to see what's going on, and then we'll hop off right before it's time to make your donation. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, okay? Please don't be that guy, all right? Anyway, okay, so that's up. I think that's it for 2017 and 2018. Like I said, it's January the 4th, Thursday. On Sunday, i um, giving a workshop. An online workshop on Monday. I'm doing my first ever live presentation of the Fay lecture to about 40 people. Um, I can do it to up to, for up to 100 people. It's been invitation only so far because of that mirror image bunch and because of the people who tend to steal my work without uh, sight, well, you know, without proper citation or anything like that. Um, and I'm doing what I'm doing, not because I think it's the coolest thing in the world to come out and say, hey, guess what, guys? The faith, the Fae have given me a mission. I'm 100% Fae. I am. And I'm supposed to be, which, which is neither here nor there. We're all descendants of the Fae. But it's, and it would be neither here nor there if I was just sewing costumes for my kids' plays, right? Which is what I was doing until like 2010. But, but I've been given a mission. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to you know, crash headlong into that trance, see if we can bust it up and then give you a way to get your own mind back. And I'm doing that via my workshops and um, talk to you about the seed race of the Fae, which are not a savior race. They're not here to save you. 
They're here to tell you, remind you who you are and hand you back your magic, okay? They're here to hand you back your magic, that's all. Now, at the turn of the tide, between one thing and another, I have to say thank you as well to, I wanna say thank you to Shane, of course, and I've said thank you to Raphael, and I've said thank you to everybody in California and my friend Steve Tynan, but one of the people I want to say the most about <clears throat> is Emily Moyer, who is bringing some of the most original radical thinking I've ever heard in my life. And I will always give her a platform, always. She's, I'm at her disposal. And the other one is Randy Moggins, my friend, my mate. He's my mate. Thanks, Randy. I don't think that we, any of us can get here without um, going back to back sometimes, right? So we're all doing good work. We're all doing good work. And um, I have a couple of interviews coming up, by the way, before I split here. I want to mention I'm going to be able to interview the Italian geophysicist, astrophysicist, uh, Giovanna Conforto. Okay, she's amazing. She talks about the baby sun. She talks about fra the fractal universe. I mean, I think I'm going to Rome. I mean, this is where she is. She's 70 years old, you know? I will go to her when I get home, I will find her and I'll put a camera there and I will happily um, make her as comfortable as possible to get her interview. I'm going to be interviewing Emily again, of course, about programmable matter that happens to be quote unquote food. Big thing for me always. And I'm also going to interview um, the director of a movie called the Banksy job. Okay. I put the, uh, I've put the um, trailer on, well, I put it on my page, but I've also put it in Patreon. And it is, ama it is an amazing, amazing film. And it is about a group who call themselves Art Qaeda. It's a real story. It's a true story, all right? And I'm total, totally interested in art as anarchy and art as change and all of those things. So those are the interviews that are coming up, all right? Um, and so happy 2018, you know, we made it, we got here, we got here somehow, and we'll keep going, right? Okay, so YouTube channel, Hard, Tear, Hard True, Patreon channel, please, you know, even anarchists need to eat, and Facebook, I'm always accessible. So I love all of you all day, every day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.